All right, everybody. Well, uh, we are ready for our next run. Fire Splitter is back with Bleed 2 doing Endless Normal for us. So please take it away. Hello, everyone. Fire Splitter here. Today we are going to do Endless Normal for Bleed 2. I am going to start right now. So this category is, as you can see, timed in-game time up there. And it's also semi-randomized. So every course is going to be randomized a little bit. So I have no idea what the course is going to look like, and I have no idea what enemy placement is going to be like. Which makes it run a little scary to run sometimes, especially for newer runners. So we are going to do a little thing here. We are going to use the fact this game is timed in-game time now by changing our weapon to a better weapon out suit for this boss. There are a couple of bosses that, due to different reasons, have better weapons for them. And... beautiful. So there we go. Happy we got to show that off. The big biggest thing in this game, and category in particular, is a little trick I'm gonna talk about, which is called dash resetting. As you can see, we can, nor we can dash while we are jumping. We can get three dashes per jump. However, sometimes you can see we are clearly doing way more than three dashes. That is because of a mechanic in this game. I'm not sure if it's a glitch or if it's a, it, actually an intent mechanic. Either or would actually not be surprising in this game. Because it's really, really good from a speedrunning perspective. This game is really, really much made with speedrunning in mind. It's, it's really good. It's one of the best boxes in the game. As the boss are randomized too, so we are basically hoping for good boss RNG as well. But yeah, if you do certain things, the game does actually reset your dash count. Those things involve falling off a ledge because the game thinks you are jumping. And even if you are like doing certain things with slopes, the game can also register that you are doing a new jump. And the hardest one is something that's called flat reset which we are not aiming to do, but we are always, always, always doing things that makes them possible to happen. It's very, very possible to make that happen consistently, but in Endless it's really hard to do so, because due to the stage layout being random, it's very, very hard to plan throughout our movement, as we do in the more static categories. Normally in this game, routing is very, 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 very huge part of this game because of the dash resetting. But as this is endless, it's really hard to like, do a fa uh, routing, so instead we are using different techniques to make it easier to do dash resetting. The biggest one I do that I don't recommend new rounds in this game is that I always run really close to the floor. This way I can really easily take use of, make use of any ledges or any slopes to make quick resets. The reason why this is a little scary is because there are usually more enemies and projectiles towards the bottom of the screen than towards the like middle or top of the screen, which makes it a little scary to run like that. However, it saves a lot of time if you get in uh, get in a lot of the dash resets. For new runners, though, I recommend taking the top road to avoid getting hit and basically make sure you have S rank going into the boss fights. Because the weapon we use in the boss fight is actually different power. Oh god, this is an interesting boss. And it's an interesting course to have this boss too. I hope we get to see a little glitch here. I don't think we will, but we might if we're lucky. This boss has a little interesting glitch. On this course. We're gonna see it. No, we, we're not. What can happen there if we are very, very, very lucky or unlucky, depending on how we view it, is that the boss can get stuck in an infinite running animation when it goes towards spikes because it's trying to go towards the middle. This is one of the slowest bosses in the game, by the way. This is like the final boss. So it has a lot of health and a lot of interesting mechanics. And on this course, it is a little annoying as well, because it can seek protection behind the wall. But there we go. There it's down. That was a really, really long boss fight. 
That is the disadvantage of having a random category. And here's the final course, and this course does highlight the most annoying obstacle of them all, in my opinion, which are the bubbles. The bubbles are, in normal game modes, annoying, but they are not like... They are still like you run and they are still like the most likely reason to die in the game, like even outside of Endless, but they are like more... They are more... I don't, I don't know what word to use. Manageable, but in Endless, due to the fact that we are running randomized, there is no way to know really what the bubbles are gonna be, which makes them very, very rough to handle. Thankfully, we had a really good bubble stage, so that's good. That's very, very rare. And here we are on the final boss of the final stage, which is, funny enough, the first boss of the game. The first real boss. And there's some. We are not done yet, though. There can be an extra boss if we're super unlucky. Oh, that was not the case. That's game. That's time. GG. That was Thank bad. you very much. Yeah, it's a really short category. So yeah, thank you so much everyone for having me here. It was really, really fun to run this game. This is like one of my absolute favorite categories to run because of how short and action-packed it is. It's a really, really, ad really, really addictive category to run because... I think, yeah. Because it's like really, really, really quick. And there's like so much happening at all times. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. It was really, really fun to run this game for you all today. And I hope to see you all around.